In this Insights review, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the support tool. If you have any questions, please comment them below, and I'll also leave a discounted link so you can always get your money's worth for Insizes. Insizes lets you drive traffic on other content using interactive call to action options. Upon logging in, we come over here to the dashboard, and now currently this section is empty but it is broken up into these sections. So we've got my links, we've got zero out of 50, our clicks, zero, domains, call to action designs, call to action RSS feed, retargeting, bio profiles, and QR codes. We also have this box here where we can paste a long link. So I've just pasted a long link into there. And then if we go on single, we can choose the domain, the redirect type, so direct or frame, and then we can go ahead and go and shorten. Then we can copy that, and we've got our short link. You can also download the QR code. We could download it as a PNG or an SVG. As you can see now, we've now got one on our My Link section as well. And if we go down here, we can see that's our shortened URL. I just used WordPress as an example, so that'll show here. We do have options next to it, so if we click on the menu, we've got more info, analytics, edit, archive, set stats public, reset stats, or delete. Now if you had a lot of different shortened links, you could go on view all, and that'll bring them all up. You have the option of selecting all, archive selected, add to campaign, add to group, or delete selected. And then again, if you've got a lot, you can click on the little search button and search for a specific link. So below dashboard, we have call to action designs. As it says here, we don't have any content at the moment, but if we go on create a CTA design and we can select from CTA contact, CTA poll, CTA message, CTA newsletter, CTA image, or a coupon. So first I'm gonna go on CTA contact. So here's where we can create a contact form where users will be able to contact us via email. So first we can set a name we can select the send email address, the email subject, the form label, and if you leave this empty, it will disable it, the form description, and the thank you message. Below there, we also have text labels, where we can set a name placeholder, email placeholder, message placeholder, or send button placeholder. So in most cases, you would probably leave these as what they are, name, email, message, or send. Um, but this could be useful if you're doing it in a different language. We also have appearance customization where you can set the form background color so we could spice it up a bit and do blue. As you may have noticed, we've got our preview there. The form text color, the input background color, the input text color, the input button color, and the button text color. We then can select the overlay position from the bottom left or bottom right and a webhook notification if we wanted to add one. Then once we're happy, if we go ahead and go and create, and as we can see, we've got our first call to action design. We've got the options to edit this. If we wanted to make any changes, again, look, there's our preview. And then we could also delete it if we wanted to. So all your different call to action designs will show in this area here. Below call to action designs, we have splash designs. Again, we have no content found, but we can create some. So we'll go ahead and go on splash layout. So a splash layout is a custom splash page that is a transitional page where you can customize it however you want. So you can first add the name. So I've gone for exclusive promo, the counter, 20, the link to the product, just got a random link there, the custom title, the upload banner. So as it says here, this must be the minimum width must be 980 pixels and the height must be between 250 and 500. The format must be a PNG, or a JPEG, and the maximum size is 500 kilobytes. So I don't have one of those to show you today, but you could go onto Canva and make one, or Photoshop, or similar. You also have the option of uploading an avatar, that's 200 by 200, it must be a PNG, or a JPEG, and a max 300 kilobytes. Below there, we've also got the custom message, and then once you're happy, if we go ahead and go and create, and then this will create your splash layout. Below splash designs, we have bio pages. Again, we don't have any content here, but if we go and create bio, we can set our bio page name, our bio page alias, and then we can set our alias name there, 
or you could leave it empty for it to generate a random alias. In content, we can then add links or contents. So we can choose from heading, text, divider, my links, HTML, image, B card, PayPal button, WhatsApp call, or widgets such as RSS feed, newsletter, contact form, product, YouTube video, Spotify embed, Apple Music embed, or TikTok embed. So I'm gonna first go for heading, useful links. You can then set the color and go on add. That will be added there. And then below it, we could add another link or content. So I could go for product, we could add our product link, set a title and the amount. I could also add some text. We've got the usual options there, being able to set it as bold, italic, insert or remove a numbered list or bullet points and add a link. Below content, we also have social links where we could add a link for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, Telegram, Snapchat, Discord, Twitch, Pinterest, Shopify, Amazon, and Line Messenger. Next to there, we have Appearance. And it's worth noting as well that on the right-hand side, this is our preview. So you can always see what you're doing and what you're changing. We can set the appearance. So we could select from a template. So we could go for this blue gradient or the pink and purple. We could go for block colors. I'm going to leave it as that gradient, I think. We can also select a font. So you can choose from a wide variety of different fonts there. If you wanted to set your own background, you could select from a single color, a gradient color. So that's like a gradient fading into another color or an image. You could also set the text color, button color, and the button text color. Next to appearance, we also have advanced, where we can set a meta title, a meta description, password protect it, the targeting pixels, and add a custom CSS. We can also enable it to display or not display our avatar, so that would essentially be where your logo could be. You can click on the menu there to upload your avatar. Once you're happy there, if we go ahead and go and publish, and then that will show in the bio pages section here. Below bio pages, we have QR codes. Again, we don't have any QR codes, but if we go and create QR, and we can select from a static QR code, which is non-trackable or dynamic. So for static, we've got text, SMS and message, Wi-Fi or a static V card, and dynamic, which is trackable. We've got V card, link, email, phone, SMS, file, WhatsApp or crypto. So if I went for link, then that will change there. So we can first set our QR code name and the domain we're choosing from, as well as adding our link. As we can see, that shows there. Now you can preview that straight away, but we can also add colors. So again, we could add a single color or a gradient color. So the gradient could start purple and with a pink, and it can be vertical, horizontal, radial, or diagonal. You can also set the eye color as well. Again, if you did just want a single color, you could click on single color. And then below colors, we also have design where we can add a logo. So if the QR code was taking you to the YouTube, you could use that or you could upload your own custom logo. You can also set the matrix style, so square, rounded or dots, the eye style, so square or circle, and the margin. Once you're happy there, if you go and generate QR codes, and as we can see, that's our custom QR codes. You also have the options of getting the analytics for the QR code, which we're going to go on to next. Edit QR code, download as a PNG, SVG, PDF, add to a group, reset the stats, duplicate or delete. Below there, we have analytics. So in analytics, we've got the data for our links. So as we can see, we've got all the months there. We've obviously just started it. So it goes September all the way to three links because we've created three links. It will then have our clicks. So our clicks throughout the last month, obviously we've not had any clicks, but they would show here, they would spike up. Our visitor map, so we could see which countries are clicking on our link. And then we would also get data for our top countries. Below analytics, we have link management where we have my links, which shows us our shortened URL from earlier our archived links, which we haven't got any at the moment, our expired links, our campaign and rotator. So we don't have a campaign at the moment, but to create a campaign, we click on create campaign, set, and set the campaign name, the rotator slug, enable the access, and then we can go and create campaign. Here on the menu button, we've got my links, 
edit campaign, analytics for the campaign, or the option to delete. Below there, we also have tracking pixels. Again, we don't have any tracking pixels, but we could add a pixel. So you could choose from Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Facebook, Google Ads, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Ad Roll, Qara, Pinterest, Bing, Snapchat, and Reddit. You could set the pixel name and the pixel tag. Then finally, below tracking pixels, we have integrations where we have Zapier. So you could connect up your Zapier by using the Zapier notification URL, as well as tools, which has got a quick shortener, a bookmarklet, and a full page script. If we just go back on the dashboard quickly, we can see we've now got three links, one call to action design, one bio profile, and one QR code. And that's just about everything. So what are my thoughts on Insizes? Well, it was a fantastic all-in-one link tool. It had a great amount of options from call to action designs and creating QR codes. And it was also really easy to use. I think they could maybe improve their analytics page just so it can go into a little bit more detail and there's more filters. But overall, I think Insizes is a fantastic support tool and I would definitely recommend. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time.